I want to welcome you to uh, the Estel Black Swamp Charge, and today we happen to be at Furman United Methodist Church, uh, one of the prettiest churches in our three charges. Of course, they're all three beautiful, but we're glad you're here with us this morning, either here in presently or online uh, watching this. So um, let's just take a moment and uh, pray for our country. Uh, Father God, we know that you are an awesome God, a forgiving God, a loving God, Right now, dear God, our world is in chaos. But Father, we know you're in control. As we come and look at our fields around us, we see the corn tossling. God, you're, you're awesome. So be with us, Lord. Bless those that are less fortunate than us. But also, Lord, be with those that are in sick and dealing with different illnesses. Lord, touch their bodies and heal them. Be, Father, with our families for those that have lost loved ones. And Lord, help them to work through it. For Lord, it is in your name we give you praise and glory and honor. Amen. You know, we're going to start a new series. It's called Entitled The Court of God. And today we're going to be looking at judgments. Judgments. And we're going to do this through the book of Amos. Through the book of Amos. So you happen to have your uh, smartphone with you or uh, your Bible with you or whatever you have. Uh, I just uh, offer you an opportunity to turn to it. Uh, bear with me because it's a little long, but yet it tells us the complete story. The word, uh, words of Amos, who were among the shepherds of Tekoa, uh, which he saw concerning Israel in the days of King Uzziah of Judah, and in the days of King Jeroboam, son of Joash of Israel, two years before the earthquake. So historical, historical uh, moment there. And he said, the Lord roars from Zion and utters his voice from Jerusalem and the pastors of, of the shepherds whisper uh, wither and the top of Carmel dries up. Thus says the Lord. For three transgressions of Damascus, and for four I will not revoke the punishment. Because they have threshed Gilead with threshing sledges of iron. <clears throat> and so I will send a fire on the house of Hazael, and it shall devour the strongholds of Ben-Hadad. I will break the gate bars of Damascus and curl off the inhabitants from the valley of Aben. And the one who holds a scepter from beth Aden. And the people of Armon shall go into exile to Kerr, thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Gaza and for four I will, will not revoke the punishment because they carried into exile entire communities to hand them over to Edom. So I will send a fire on the wall of Gaza, uh, a fire that shall devour its strongholds. And I will cut off the inhabitants of Ash Ashdod and the one who holds a scepter from Ashkelon. I will turn my hand against Ekron, and the remnant of the Philistines shall perish, says the Lord God. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Tyre, and for four I will not revoke judgment, because they deliver, delivered entire communities over to Edom, and did not remember the covenant of kinship, so I shall send a fire on the wall of Tyre, a fire that shall devour its strongholds. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom, uh, and for four, I will not revoke this punishment, because he pursued his brother with the sword and cast off all pity. He, remained, he maintained his anger perpetually and kept his wrath forever. So I will send a fire on Teman, and it shall devour the strongholds of Bashra. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of the Amorites, and for four I will not revoke the punishments, because they have ripped open pregnant women in Gilead, and in order to enlarge their territory. So I will kindle a fire against the wall of Rabbah, a fire that shall devour its strongholds, with shouting, with shouting on the day of battle, with a storm on the day of a whirlwind, and then their king shall go into exile, and his officials together. Thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Moab and four and for four, I will not revoke the punishment because he burned to lime, to lime the bones of the king of Edom. So I will send a fire on Moab and it shall devour the strongholds of Kerouac and Moab shall die amid an uproar, amid shouting, amid shouting and the sound of the trumpet. I will cut off the ruler from its midst and will kill all of its officials with him. Thus says the Lord. 
the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Father, these are your words. Open them to us, make them alive for us, and help us, Lord, to learn something for the world in which we live in, and to help each of us, Lord, know that there is going to be a judgment. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You know, uh, we have entered a, a soap opera out, uh, court um, courtroom over the past several months with the death bird trial. To many, it seems crazy to launder your dirty clothes in public. To others, it means spending up to $20,000 for a front row seat in the courtroom. You know, everyone, everyone has been waiting to see the final judgment by the jurors. So as of today, Sunday, there has been a verdict. And of course, Johnny Depp came out on top. But it wasn't until after the jury answered 42 questions, 42 questions, 42 questions. What is this anyway? What about the children, the neighbors, their friends, the observers? You know, in God's court, there will be no cameras, no objections, no pleading, and no witnesses defend the souls of humanity. God will be seated on the throne. Jesus will be at his right hand. And, there will, and the Holy Spirit will be testifying about each person's life as they approach the bench. Our lives are our testimony. Our lives are our witness. Our lives will either save us in God's grace and love or condemn us to the fires of eternity. This is exactly why our Bible is full of prophecy. It records, reminds, and reveals our future in God's Spirit's inspired word. This trial that we will be covering in the next few weeks will certainly make a, any human being think about its future. So let's explore. Let's see its warnings. And let's see its promises. The first thing we will learn is that everyone will be standing in the front of God's judgment bench. Well, the devil made me do it. <laughs> uh, guns are evil. It's only a white lie. Wish I had that kind of swing on my back porch. It was their fault. I only followed to have fun. Black lives matter. Blue lives matter. All lives matter. Whatever excuse you can think of will be burnt in hell by the judgment of God, our God. He demands respect, obedience, and most of all, our love. Amos puts it as plainly as one could. For three sins of Damascus, even for four, I will not turn back my wrath. For three sins of Gaza, even for four, I will not turn back my wrath. For three sins of Tyre, even for four, I will not turn my back, back my wrath. For three sins of Edom, even for four, I will not turn back my wrath. For three sins of Ammon, uh, even for four, I will not turn back my wrath. For three sins of Moab, even for four, I will not turn back my wrath. And finally, for three sins of Jude, even for four, I will not turn back my wrath. These were all of Israel's neighbors. There are some important truths for us to see in these judgments. First, they are all because of sin. One, two, or three. It does not matter. There are consequences to sin. Then God shows his grace to the world by giving them one more sin before his wrath falls. But who is listening? No one's listening. <clears throat> no one is obeying God's law. No one sees God's wrath as anyone neither seriously or fine, nor final. And then the punishment will be found in God's disgust with humanity. The second thing is that God does not forget our sin. As each of these cities was brought before God's seat, he was hurt by their disobedience and selfishness. They wanted to oppress, maim, kill each other. Does it sound like today? It certainly does. Did anyone here today see the murders, shootings, and robberies over this past Memorial Day weekend? It just astonishes me. Made me sick to my stomach. What do you think it's doing to God's heart, to his mind, to his hands, to his angels? The world today is doing exactly what these cities were doing, being anything, being anything but human. Our world has become a haven for beasts, 
ugliness, a time to hurt others, and certainly no respect for life. The only way to get our slate wiped clean is to repent and turn from our evil ways. It's easy, but do we do it? My favorite thing that I have heard, I've learned in all my experiences with my Baptist church folks, Mount Vernon Nazarene University and seminary, or in seminary and down through the, the years of my ministries, is that we sin every day in thought, word, and deed. Every day, every day, that we should be on our knees asking God to forgive us. God tells the people of these cities that, sinners, cities that he does not forget the evil, the evil that they have brought on each other and humanity, God's creation. The new 2022 quarter has the head turned away from in God we trust. The very people who are advocating for gun control are demanding that we have more police in our schools. There are many, many churches that have removed God from their sanctuaries. He has been replaced by feelings, prosperity, and the need for too much grace, as Paul says. It's like a marriage. What happens when the feelings fizzle? out the prosperity dis disappears in death and we have used up our portion of grace god is real and his ability to forgive us is up to us not him and finally these cities judgment reveal the severity and the completeness of the results of their sin against humanity and each other you know damascus had used their plowing equipment the very metal parts, the plows, to destroy the homes in the towns of Gilead, a place dear to God's heart. And this resulted in fire, the gate of Damascus to be destroyed, allowing enemies to enter. The kings were destroyed and then all sent in exile. You know, Gaza had sold the people of God into slavery with the Edomites, the most ruthless and evil clan at that particular time. So again, fire came. Fortress pursuits were consumed. Kings killed and their final judgment was death. Tyre again sold everyone into slavery with the Edomites. Again, fire came. Everything was destroyed. Edom was condemned due to their treacherous behavior and disregard to God. <clears throat> Same thing happened to them. Amon did horrible things to women and many others. Fire came. Everything was destroyed. Leadership will go into exile. Moab fell to the similar judges. You know, these are the same commonalities. God used fire to purify. God used their personal belongings and their lineage to strip them of their identity. And God used their sin to push them as far away from his presence as he could without destroying the entire world. But the most important thing we are able to take from this, <laughs> from this is those who were faithful to God and obeyed the commandments were spared the destruction of, in their, of their earthly lives, their physical lives. The failure to abide by God's law, forgive, forgive uh, cost many their eternity in heaven. So it is today. The choice is ours. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord, would be a great battle cry in this broken world. Next week, judgment continues and it involves Israel itself. Our God loves us so much that he sent the prophets to help teach us about his wrath, his love and grace. And of course, all of these point to the cross and the cross points us to Jesus. And Jesus points us to where we receive our forgiveness. And in that, we have the remembrance of our communion table, where we serve two elements, the bread and the wine. The bread representing the broken body of Christ, which is broken for you and me. And the wine was a symbol of his spilt blood for the remission of our sins our sins not his so as we around the world prepare for communion today may god just pour his richest blessings upon us 
and fill us with his grace and his love. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.